Welcome friends to the Someone Gets Me podcast. I am your host, Diane Allen, and I am so delighted that you're here. This podcast was created because I believe there is a visionary leader inside each one of us who is waiting to be seen. In each episode of Someone Gets Me, you will hear useful tips from successful visionaries who will share their stories about how being seen has allowed them to take their vision out into the world with action. Your body bears the burden. Hi, I'm Diane Allen, and I am here with a great expert on body awareness and self-care, Julie Ashlock. I've known her for many, many years, and she is an incredible woman. You're going to so love to hear what she has to say because I think our body does bear the burden. Our body feels it when we're fearful, when we're having a hard time, when we're angry. Our body holds on to things and there's ways to heal that and get rid of that nastiness so you can be free again on so many levels. So I asked Julie to come onto the show and she has so graciously offered to give us this time to share her wisdom with us. So I'd like you to welcome with me to the show, Julie. Welcome, Julie. Thanks, Diane. It's a pleasure to be here. I look forward to uh, having this time with you. Uh, We're going to have so much fun. And as you know, because you listen to the show, we talk about whatever comes through intuitively to help bring hope to people, to be able to jump that chasm, to say, I can live my vision. I can do it too. So- So one of the things I want to start off with talking to you about is how old were you when you started being intrigued by how the body works or, or the healing, helping thing? Like when did that start coming into your awareness? How old were you? Oh my gosh. I was over 40 years old. I, you know, had the whole corporate nine to five ish thing going and just totally was doing the grind and wondering what the heck I was getting out of bed for in the morning. And, you know, September of 2008 came when the whole market crashed here. And, uh, you know, for most people, it would have been absolutely devastating. And, And it was devastating at the moment and time that it happened because my spouse and I worked for the same company and, you know, we lost six figures in a matter of four days between us. And that was a tough blow. But at the same token, I knew that I would rather rip my fingernails out than go back to another corporate job. I didn't want to work for anybody else anymore. And so within a couple of weeks after having been laid off, you know, I was like, what do I want to do when I grow up now? And so out of the blue, you know, here I am sitting in front of this this massage therapy school and saying, you know, I'm 40 years old. I'm not going back to school. This is crazy. You know, what am I doing? But Man, that since that day came, like, I just can't tell you how different my perspective on life is and how I enjoy getting out of bed. And, you know, they say when you love what you're doing that you never work a day in your life. And for me, when I'm like physically working with people and seeing changes made, it's true. I, I, I haven't worked a day of my life when it comes to helping people change their perspective in their minds and, and being able to live their best lives. So 40 years old. So you were 40 years old and you, the seemingly not so great experience in the world flipped for you into something really magical and amazing. So how come massage therapy? There are so many things you could be doing out there when you want to free yourself of the corporate trap. What drew you to massage? Uh, so to be completely honest, it was my spouse. You know, She woke me up out of bed one morning and she's like, you know what? you're pretty good at giving a massage. And I think that we need to go to this massage school. And I was like, no, you're crazy. Like, what are you talking about? And so it was really just her giving me a push. But as soon as I started getting into it, I mean, I just like before this entrance into my world of of health and wellness, like I had given up, you know, I had learned everything I needed to learn because I had my nine to five job. But since I started like opening my mind to how our body has the innate ability to heal on its own, I mean, I literally could be studying nonstop 24 seven and just sponging in every single thing I can learn now and knowing there's, you know, a million different modalities and methods out there that our body, you know, responds to. And we just need to know what it's asking us for and to tune into it and listen to it 
and then respond accordingly. So it's just been like so life changing for me that I just can't get enough education about it right now. Oh, that's, that is so inspiring. I have goosebumps um, because I met you after you were already a massage therapist. So I didn't know that part of the story or if you told me, I never didn't remember it. And I'm like, how cool is that? Like your natural ability of something that really turns you on now was coming through in a personal setting. And then that person goes, come on, let's go do this. Good thing she did that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. On many oh. levels. I'm so thankful for her. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that, it's really interesting, you know, like people close to us can awaken within us a deep inner calling that we didn't even know was there because it was so dormant. For sure, 100%. You know, I think that's really, really cool. So massage therapy at 40 years old. Yeah. Wonderful. So has there been ever a time before that in your life where you have um, experienced a situation where people didn't understand you or didn't get you or you saw the world differently than others and and you had a, had a challenge with um, kind of average thinking, so to speak? Has that ever happened? Um, well, I mean, to a degree, I guess it's probably been most of my adult life. Um, you know, I'm the youngest of four kids and you know, the, the day I realized I was really different from everybody else was just, you know, my sexuality when, when I realized I was different from the rest of, you know, the people in my family and, and my life. And so bearing, you know, bearing that my family was loving, but not supportive to begin with, mm -hmm. you know, it was that typical phase, you know, thing that my, my family thought I was going through, which has now lasted, I don't know, about 40 years. <laughs> So I just, I guess I feel like I've always been, you know, kind of a, an outside thinker and finding my own path and, you know, just, just really having more of a mindset of, you know, how people who don't feel like they're in the mainstream path, you know, can survive and thrive. And, you know, eventually my family came around and they've been nothing but loving and supportive, you know, for a long while now. So um, but yeah, I totally, totally get what it's like to feel like you're the outsider and that you don't think like other people do. And, you know, I've just, I've always questioned, I guess, the, the norm, so to speak. Right. I always say that normal's a setting on the dryer, you know, so it's like, <laughs> it, it totally doesn't work for anybody who's really a visionary. And it's kind of like you were this hidden gem of a visionary and then it got awakened. And yeah. And, you know, some people wait, you know, like say, oh, I, I knew I was going to do this when I was five or it's always been in my life. And then other people, it's later because of whatever, you know, life happening or we awaken in a different way. So it's, it's always fascinating to hear like how the story came. Yeah. So, well, I mean, you know, I think so many of us, you know, just get sucked in to, you know, what is expected of us mm -hmm. and you know, the, the basic nine to five, you know, what is supposed to happen. And, you know, that it was a natural, seemingly natural path for me for the first 40, 20 years of my life as an adult, you know, to, to go down and do the natural progression. But man, like what an awakening, you know, and, and something has to sometimes just like seriously happen. Like I got kicked to the curb from the corporate world to go, okay, I'm, I'm done with that. Now, what is it really that I want to get passionate about and what I really want, you know, to survive and thrive doing with? And, you know, you just you have to be open to it. Totally open to it. Because you could have still stayed in denial and gone back into the corporate world and, and um, still be living in that sleepwalking kind of trance, right? I mean, it could have been um, that way. And so thankfully, you didn't do that because you bless a lot of people with your healing work. So it's, it, I'm glad that you've picked the business owner way of being. Yeah, me too. Thank you. So how is it different being a business owner from being an employee in the corporate world? What's different in your, in your thinking, in your mentality? Because it seems so different as far as responsibility in a lot of levels, but also just the way we have to approach the world. So do you notice any big differences like if somebody's in the corporate world right now and they're listening to us and they're like oh if she did it maybe I can do it what's the big difference yeah. they can expect freedom total freedom um I mean the last thing I want to say that it's been an easy path because it has not been an easy path and it 
you know, it's just a totally different set of um, rules to follow, I guess. Mm -hmm. But when I was when I was doing, you know, the sitting behind the desk job, my world was so small. Like I knew so few people in my community and I would, you know, go and do my thing and come home and, and, and life was just small. And when I became, you know, when I, the day I finished massage therapy school and I'm like, Oh my God, I'm a business owner. Like, this is like the greatest thing ever. And then it's like, holy cow, I have no idea how to run a business. You know, how do I get clients? How do I, you know, how do I build a business? And so it forces you to get outside of your box in so many ways. And, you know, I, I'm, I, you know, I know you're an introvert and I pretty much am too. Um, I'm good, love one-on-one, -on -one. like I could talk to you all day for the rest of my life. But if there were four other people sitting around you doing this, I would be totally uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But you have to learn how to deal outside of what comes naturally to you to interact with other people. And I mean, the people that I've met in the last, you know, 15 years as a business owner, I am like so grateful for this, uh, for this experience because I have met people, you know, business owners and other networking, being in other networking groups. I never would have met you, you know, if I were still stuck in that world. And so just the people and the expansion that you get from being a business owner and the opportunities that it presents to you are so amazing you know again you have to be open you have to you know just figure things out what's going to work for you and in, in addition to that freedom um i'm very blessed that my parents are still alive and they live you know 45 minutes away my dad's 87 and my mom just turned 84 my mom just got diagnosed with alzheimer's disease last year um, and so being a business owner has afforded me the amazing opportunity to be able to schedule my life such that I can be there to help them through, you know, the later years that they're going through. They still live in their own house, which, you know, again, is amazing. But in a sense, you know, I'm kind of running two households right now, Ooh, taking yeah. care of theirs and taking care of, of you know, of my life too. But but again, it's such a blessing because if I had a standard nine to five job, I couldn't take the time off to go to their doctor's appointments with them or, you know, God forbid they have this emergency situation comes up and they need our help. And so I literally can work from, you know, different times and places, you know, doing the things that I do, the variety of different, you know, legs of income that I have afford me that freedom to be able to be there with my family too. I, yeah, and that's so important. It's so important to have that freedom on lots of levels. And and when there's important people to us in the world, the biggest tragedy is when something external kind of keeps us from them, you know, like a job or not being able to get time off or or something like that. And so there's a big blessing, even though it's a big learning curve to learn how to run your own business, but there's also a big blessing to be able to afford you that opportunity to do that. So, you know, that's a really, I think, a very good point. I think a lot of people don't really realize the impact of like external restraints on um, inhibiting the connection that, that of the things that matter, like our family or even good friends or whatever it is. So, you know, yeah. that's really, that's really, really cool. So do you, do you use any massage or any of the energy work and things you do to help your mom? Um, I haven't so much done that, but the different, again, the energy levels that I have learned and, you know the the recent edition of of the the most recent thing that I've started you know practicing is Ho Opono Pono, and uh, it's an ancient Hawaiian healing art form, which is just cool on so many different levels. Like it's amazing, but it is a way that we clean ourselves internally, which in turn helps us to help other people. Mostly, they're unknowing about it but it's such a powerful tool that I have been utilizing to do that. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Tell everybody what this is because not everybody listening to us is going to know what, it, what you're talking about. So explain a little bit about what it is and then I want to talk some more about it. But define yeah, it for us. Sure. Uh, I just happened on to Ho Oponopono a less than a month ago, but it was such an intriguing thing for me. Um, 
just as part of it is the word Ho'oponopono. Um, like two years ago, I was looking to get a, a tattoo that had Hawaiian meaning behind it. And so translating from our language into Hawaiian is really a lot tougher than one would imagine that it would be because um, the phrase that I was looking for is, is eternal issues, which is something personal to my spouse and I that, you know, was a longstanding thing. And so I wanted something that would translate into that in Hawaiian. And I'm sure you can't see it, but yep. along my arm, mm -hmm. if you can see the word, part of it is Pono. Pono is right there, right. I see Pono right on your arm, right by the flower. <laughs> right, and that was like three years ago. And so when I was just scanning through and I was like, oh, a Pono, Pono, a Pono, what? Like, I gotta know what this is, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, I just bought into this course. Um, the, the gentleman who teaches it, his name is Dr. Joe Vitale, who is part of The Secret for anybody who has seen that docu-series uh, from a good handful of years ago, which I highly recommend to so many people. Um, but he ran, in, uh, he didn't run into, he purposefully went out to seek um, Dr. Uh, Hu Lin, which is one of the founder. I wouldn't say he's the founder, but he's like currently right now, like the main teacher of Ho'oponopono. And it's all about self-accountability. It's saying that every encounter that we have as a human being, if it comes into our existence, if it comes into our being, we have a hand in it happening, whether it's something that's happening right now currently to us, or whether it's something that happened generations and generations and generations ago, we still as humans have to accept that we have a responsibility for it. And so it's, there's a cleaning tool, which is very simple yet powerful. It's four phrases. One is, I love you. Two is, I'm sorry. Three is please forgive me, and four is thank you. And so repeating this process is speaking to, I love you, is speaking to ourselves, but also speaking to whoever we find our source to be, divinity to be, whoever that is in, you know, in, your, in your soul, then that's who you're saying I love you to, but it's more over saying I love you to ourselves. Yes. And yes. the please forgive me, I'm sorry, is please forgive me and I'm sorry for whatever my part is in this situation. Whether it's I'm sorry that, you know, somebody was in a car accident today, please forgive me. It's saying whatever my accountability is in this, you know, I'm, I'm accepting my part in it. And I love one of the things they say is, have you ever noticed whenever there's a problem, you're always there. Huh. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> All righty then. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's such a simple yet wow when you think about it statement. Mm -hmm. And so then, you know, thank you was just thank you for, you know, letting me be here to clean my part of the situation. And so just going through those, those four basic, simple, you know, phrases throughout life is just cleaning, cleaning the situation. And once you clean, uh, you know, uh, your, your internal thoughts enough, that's when true inspiration comes to us. And inspiration is what moves us forward. Um, it, it just sounds really complicated, but it's so simple. It's just, you have to really spend some time, you know, digesting what the actual process is. But the concept is, is that most things in our brain are just mere memories. It's a memory of something, whatever we hear, whatever we see, it's a memory in our brain. And so to get past so much of that, we have to clean it away. And the whole process is having divinity, the source, again, whoever, you know, your, your inspiration is, they, that it cleanses. And then we get pure inspirational thoughts. And that's when we know what those thoughts are of inspiration are what we're supposed to be doing in life. Oh, that, that's really amazing because it, it cleans everything. And I, I was just reading recently an article that was sharing how there's genetic 
hand down of energy for 14 generations. So we're cleaning out things that aren't just our, like ours. They're ours, but they're not our human one right now, this lifetime, maybe. It could be generational. And, you know, the old yep. school, you know, the old days, they called it generational curses. Well, maybe on some level, it could be called that still. And so it's a powerful cleaning thing. And um, I'm glad you explained that so well to everybody, because I don't think everybody really understands it. I know when I first learned it, I'm like saying the four things and I, I got it, you know, like, okay, because I'm pretty aware spiritually and I study a lot. And then I did somewhere I heard to do it every day, a couple times a day or something like that. So I did. And that's when I really noticed a change with the consistency really of being in that mantra of it. And then I started really feeling the shifting going on from the inside. And as we heal ourselves, our generations are healed. So as you clean out Julie, then your mom, by definition, is receiving healing, which was the beginning of the question, right? It's like, so exactly. you're, you're helping your mom and your dad and everybody related to you and everybody around you elevate and evolve and heal by cleaning out your own stuff, known and unknown to you. You know, we don't yeah. always have to know the content because we don't know all the content by definition. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you can't have um, two contradicting thoughts at one time. You can't have a positive thought and a negative thought at the same time. And so you're either thinking one end of the spectrum or the other. And if you're spending your time cleaning, then there is no room for negative, you know, thought processes to come into our brain. And so if we're constantly thinking the positive, you know, keeping the positive thoughts going, then we just literally don't have time to have negativity in our lives. Right. Just no room for it anymore. So you work on people energetically, you help them with cleaning out themselves and you do several other things as well. Um, you help people with their nutrition and movement and all kinds of things. You're like really multifaceted in a health and wellness part. And so we're talking about how the body bears the burden. And so if somebody's got like a lot of sadness or pain or whatever, what do you notice in about their body? Like if we were to be out, like, what do you, how do you notice it landing in the body? Oh Old my pain. gosh. I love that question. There's a million different forms <laughs> that negative energy will settle into our bodies. Um, you, you know, they, they say that our gut is our second brain. Um, mm -hmm. And so everything that affects our brain is then in essence affecting our gut. Our, our gut is like so responsible for so much of our health. So Anybody who's like experiencing digestive issues, autoimmune diseases, you know, heart conditions, diabetes, you know, neuropathy, muscle pain, joint pain, headaches, you know, literally everything that settles in our body as a dis-ease is so caused by the negative energy of our thoughts. It's like such a huge impactful thing that people, most people don't even realize the consequences of the negative energy and how it settles into our body. Yeah. So when we have that low vibration, negative energy, and it settles in there and the gut's out of alignment, right? Usually their stomach bothers them or they can't digest well, or they get all constipated or, or whatever, all those things that happen with bad digestion. What would be a couple tips if somebody's listening to us and go, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't believe I'm doing this. What is something that somebody can do to help themselves turn that around so that that, that, that feeling in their gut that's causing trouble can start yeah. going back to a health mode? What, what would you suggest to somebody who's just listening to us and they're curious? What would they do? Yeah. Uh, so one, going back to the whole cleaning process that we just talked about for Ho'oponopono. You know, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Trying to get the positive energy flowing and doing the cleaning out of the negative thoughts. But I just, I really think at the quote unquote gut level, people really need to be listening to our bodies. And when there are things going on emotionally, you know, with our relationships, family members, work, you know, friends, uh, all of the, you know, the isolation that people are experiencing right now. It's how are my thoughts affecting how I'm feeling? 
and really trying to get tuned in to when I go down this trail of, you know, sadness or, or negativity or, or knowing that my relationship is causing me, you know, all of these negative feelings in my body, you know, it's, it's really time to do a gut check and say, what, what outside of my body is causing me to feel this way? Um, as, as to what we can do about it, um, one, we have to clean up what we put in our body. We just absolutely have to clean up what we put in our body. You can't out-exercise a bad diet. You can't have negative feelings about the food that you're putting in, all of the diets that we go on and all of, you know, our daily activities. You know, once you put the word diet out there into your brain, everything becomes a negative and everything is a fight and a struggle. So our whole mindset as to our health, you know, we only get one body so far as I'm aware of. And if we're not treating it with the utmost respect that it deserves, it can't perform for us. And so our whole mindset about our food choices, about, you know, how often do we really need to eat? Are we staying properly hydrated? Are we getting adequate sleep? Because between bad sleep and, and dehydration, like you're just, you're causing such a recipe for disease to come into your body. That's not even funny. So just getting back to the basics, are we eating whole foods? Are we taking out the processed garbage from our life? And do we have a great intention about the foods that we are eating? Are we really enjoying them? Or are we feeling guilty every time we put something that our brain says, oh, you know, you shouldn't be having this or drinking this it's going to just do a, a negative energy to our system as soon as it goes inside. Right. And it could even be something healthier that your body wants. But if you have negative thoughts around that item, whatever it is, then like gluten, like some people can eat gluten just fine. And some people have a difficult time with it. I personally think it's the way it's processed, but that's another, that's another podcast. I but, agree. but if they're walking around and they're going, oh, it's bad. It's bad. I'm not supposed to eat this. I'm not supposed to eat this. This is bad. Unless they have celiac disease, it's probably not bad. And that thinking will create as much or more of a problem than if they just let themselves enjoy whatever it was. And I'm Absolutely. glad you brought that up. That's such an important part. People don't realize how our mind is, is the ultimate influencer on all of it. And, and we need to get very, very clear on that, that you know, we have way more control over the outcome than we're led to believe. Absolutely, 100%. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. It's really unbelievable. So have you ever worked with somebody, because you work with a lot of people on lots of different levels. Have you ever, ever worked with somebody who said, Julie, I really want to change or I want, help me with this, help me with that. And then they just procrastinate and they have a really hard time getting started or they, they re, you know, they really want it. Like they're sincere. They're not just, you know, pulling your chain, but they, their procrastination is like in the way they're just really struggling with that. What would you say to somebody who procrastinates? Because I could tell by your smile that, yes, you've, you've worked with people who procrastinate. Maybe you even done that once or twice yourself. Um, gifted visionary people procrastinate a lot, which is why I ask the questions about it, because we all do. So what would you tell somebody that you're working with? Like they want to change their health. They want to make their gut better. They want to start cleaning out all those things. And, and they're, they're, you know, but they're having a hard time getting started. What would be something they could do? Yeah, so the six inches between our ears are the most important six inches in the world that we have to start working on to begin with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so many people that I work with, and, and mainly it's women that I work with, we're so putting everybody else in front of us. You know, we'll take care of our kids, we'll take care of our jobs, we'll take care of, you know, all the outside factors before we realize that it has to start with ourselves. Uh, you know, our kids pay attention to what we do. Um, you know, it's so easy to say, I'll get to that tomorrow. I'll take care of me tomorrow. You know, how many people do we know? I'm going to start that diet tomorrow. And when you truly are ready to put yourself first and know that you're not being selfish, that's, that's such a big factor for so many people that, to say, gosh, I, you know, I, I feel like I'm being selfish if I really, you know, focus on me. 
no, you're really being selfish if you don't focus on you. Yes. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, we don't have the adequate energy to take care of anybody else in our life. And so when we truly get to the core of loving our own existence is when we'll truly say, I'm deserving of really focusing and changing the things that I'm doing to myself and giving to myself nutrition wise. But again, it all has to come from what are our thoughts about what we're doing? Because again, got to take the word diet out. This is a lifestyle. Taking care of ourselves is a marathon. It's not a sprint. And we have to give ourselves grace every single day and appreciate the small wins that we do. If you drink a bottle more of water today than you did yesterday, that's a win. That's giving your body something that it wants and needs and appreciates. You're going to have falls. You're going to have, you know, step offs. You're going to indulge in something that, okay, you, you feel good about whatever you indulge in. You know, if you're going to a birthday party and you have a piece of cake, you should be telling yourself, oh my God, body, this is the most amazing piece of cake I've ever had. This is so good and so beneficial for me right now. Tomorrow, I'm probably going to make a healthier decision. I won't have that piece of cake tomorrow. But everything that you do that is a positive, you have to say, I love myself. I'm doing this for me. I'm you know, doing this for the people that I love so that I can be there you know, in, in 20 years to see my, my grandkids walk down the aisle, to see my, you know, who, whatever that goal is. If, if you're working your tail end off right now, doing that grind of whatever your job is with the goal of, you know, when I retire, I'm going to be able to do this amazing, you know, thing in life. You have to be preparing your body right now to start having that future. If you want to be healthy enough to enjoy those things that we're working so hard for right now. Yes, that's so true. And you make a really good point that self-care is not selfish. To not do it is selfish. Um, because when we don't take care of ourselves and we create dis-ease, that's the ultimate selfishness, really. And, yeah. uh, and so we live in a society that says it all backwards. And so that's what, one of the reasons why I really wanted you to speak to the body bearing the burden today, because though you have wisdom in lots of areas, you have a real intimate understanding here. And it's very important for all of us visionaries and for everybody who's trying to like get on the other side of whatever they're stuck with to realize that it starts in our head and taking care of yourself first is the gift. It's not selfish at all. It's the gift. And so you so said it. I love how you said it. Uh, you know, as a now 54 year old, um, you know, who just started learning all of this at the age of 40. So really for the last 14 years, have I really been, you know, devoted to figuring out how do we make these changes? Uh, you know, and again, it goes back to, you know, I'm an entrepreneur. So I have all of these stresses to, you know, to succeed as a business owner. And so the pressure is always on. And it just keeps the cortisol level so high in my body. And, you know, I can tell you that no matter how much I preach to other people to tell them, you know, the right things, the track to go down to get the results, I personally struggled for such a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I finally had to admit and realize God, I got to stop stressing so much because no matter what activity I do, no matter how much I change the food that I put in my body, if I don't get the cortisol levels down, get the stress levels down, I'm never going to find the results that I'm searching for myself. And so it's really digging in deep to say what really is keeping me from achieving my goals. And stress is going to do it every single time if that's what you're holding on to. Yes, that, that you might want to rewind and listen to her say that again, you guys, because it's true. That's a truth there, right? The stress can get us. And, and the teachers, the people who have the know, we all have to deal with the stress. I have a very high stressful life as well. And I have to do a lot of self-care and a lot of things to decompress so that that 
cortisol and that stress doesn't just get all over the top. And so I do sailing and I quilt and I walk my dog and I hang out with nature and I meditate and I cook. I do lots of things because I, get, I like variety. So what are some things you do, Julie, to help you keep your stress level down or to discharge your stress when you've had one of those days where you want to pull all your hair out and run through the house screaming? <laughs> Because we have oh, those. Um, yeah. what, do you, what do you do to help yourself just get rid of the stress? Well, I love to exercise. I, I know a lot of people don't. I really do love to exercise. But again, it's, it's such a fine line for me. Uh, you know, you and I have talked offline. I'm, I'm struggling with, you know, some, some physical injuries right now. I, I pulled something in my knee this past week. And, and so again, it's such an internal learning curve for me. And, and I'm just being so real right now because, you know, I have to figure out what is it that my body really wants and what does it really need and what my perception is of what, you know, strength is and, and how do I achieve the results. Right. Yeah. And so my body is talking to me. My body's telling me, uh, no, that's not quite it right now. You need to be focusing more internally about how to clean stuff out. And so you start down this process and then you just learn more and more and more and you go, okay, I got to take a break here for a while, but I, you know, then I'll reroute my focus on, you know, how do I still love myself and take care of myself? You know, we, we love the beach, love to get into the car and just go on a drive, you know, out to, to where nature is and just un, unwind from, you know, the stresses of driving around here that I'm sure so many people out there understand those too. It's just unplugging. You know, I love music. Uh, I love just sitting at the beach and vegging. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, you got to unplug, you know, take care of uh, letting the electronics go, just vegging out and, and totally getting away from, I never watch the news if I can avoid it because that to me is a total stressor. So it's just knowing, you know, how do I control what I feel good about and avoiding the things that don't make us feel good. Yeah, it's, I totally agree. I don't watch the news either. If I can avoid it, I will. The only thing I care about about the news is storms. I pay attention to the weather, but because <laughs> I've raised sailboats. important for us here in Florida. <laughs> right. Well, because I've raised sailboats my whole life and my mother was a genius when it came to navigation and weather, I can go outside and look and pretty much tell you what's going to happen better than what the report would say anyway. And so- I just have to let my dog tell me what's going on. <laughs> right. Right. Our dogs know. So, uh, you know, I know that when the ibis leave, that means a hurricane's imminent because an ibis is the last bird to leave before a major storm. And that's why the Miami Hurricanes mascot is an ibis because oh, fascinating. the ibis is the last bird to leave before a hurricane. So if the ibis is still walking around in my yard, I'm good. You know, that's, fascinating. That's yeah, awesome. So, so it, it's, we, there's ways to unplug and decrease our stress and still be informed on the things that matter. I guess that was my point kind of. You know? Yeah, yeah. So what's the most memorable food you've ever eaten? The most memorable food. Um, so I don't know that per se it was a food, but it was an experience. Uh, <laughs> went to visit uh, our eldest son in Canada, and there was a restaurant there that is pitch black. Like you can't see anything in front of you. And so you order your food before you go in um, and you hopefully make semi-rational choices with the understanding that you're not going to be able to see a single thing that you're getting. Um, and you go in and you feel the energy of people around you. You know that they're there. You can't really tell how far away they are, but everything they bring you and they tell you where the placement of stuff is and you eat an absolute pitch blackness. Whoa. Was that, how was that? Was that, what it, was your experience it was, of it? It was something that I can say I did and I probably wouldn't want to do again. I mean, it's, um, it's kind of unnerving after a while, you know, because you really, I mean, normally, you know, when you're in the quote unquote dark, you can kind of see shadows, you can kind of, you know, get to the point where you can discern, you know, where stuff is. This was absolute 
pitch black that you could not see your hand in front of your face. And so it really plays with your senses, you know, mm -hmm. you don't really, you think you know what you're eating, but you're not really sure. And you have no idea really how much you've eaten on your plate because you can't see it. <laughs> which might be a good thing in the long run. <laughs> we might need a lot less. <laughs> um, wow. But yeah, I'd say that's <laughs> been by far my absolute most unique food experience. I'm, I'm not really a, a big experimental, not knowing what I eat kind of person. I'm kind of a traditional uh wanting to know what I'm having in front of me person. So I, I have friends who have traveled a lot and have eaten things that I can't fathom eating. So, <laughs> <laughs> so oh. yeah, that's, that's my story. Wow. So uh, we have a course coming out, right? Yeah. What is it called? Yeah, it's not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault, which uh, in short is enough. I N U F and my program is designed uh, primarily for women uh, who are getting close to menopause or after. And it's 12 different modules. Uh, so I like to use the analogy, if, if you have a garden hose and it has you know, seven or eight different little leaks in it, you can't fix one of those leaks and then the garden hose is going to function to perfection. You literally have to fix all of those little leaks in the hose to get it you know to work well and so um, the different modules of my program uh, the very first one is treat is educating you on how to sleep well again because that is such a huge thing that so many of us are missing right now even people who think that we sleep well we're really not um, if you're not getting to the third rim level of sleep at night which is when your body really flushes you know the toxins out gets the muscles, you know, rejuvenated and, and gets the brain fog out. If you don't reach that rim level of sleep, you, you wake up, you know, behind the curveball again and like you didn't get enough sleep and you're exhausted when you get out of bed. You know, so many of us put our head on the pillow at night and can't shut the brain off, right? Or, you know, you, you, your head, you like pass out literally when your head hits the pillow and people think that that's sleeping well, but that's not. That's... Mm -hmm. That's just passing out and your body is not getting right. to the, the deep level of sleep. And so I teach, uh, you know, a dozen different things that we need to do on a nightly basis from, you know, our, our, we need to be in complete darkness, going back to the darkness thing. You know, we need to learn to sleep like the cavemen and women did and, and have a cool room and get rid of the electronics and, you know, really have a serene, peaceful place that we can really shut down and, and let our body do what it needs to do. So that's the very first module. I talk about things about proper hydration. Um, you know, we talk about whole food eating, detoxing the chemicals out of our body because people have literally no idea how much exposure we have every single day to toxins that are exposing us to injury and illness. And we talk about, um, you know, customizing our nutrition. I, I work with a company that specifically customizes to every single individual because one size doesn't fit all. And, and if we're not giving our body specifically what it needs based on our daily habits and our lifestyle and where we came from, um, it all matters, you know. And, and no matter mm -hmm. how healthy we think that we eat, we literally are not able to get the nutritional supplements out of our food sources today that we were able to get, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, so we, we customize vitamins. I, I have a health and wellness DNA test that literally gives you your own personal owner's guide to what your body is best going to respond to based on your DNA. Uh, we talk about meditation. We talk about uh, essential oils. You know, I literally go through and help you to clean up all of those little holes along the way <laughs> so that your garden hose is working to perfection. Oh, that is an amazing, amazing idea. I cannot wait to see the course. So we will have the link to Julie's program in the show notes along with all of her contact information. So if you're loving what you're hearing Julie talk about half as much as I am, you're going to want to reach out to her and 
connect with her and see how she can offer you um, a solution or an idea or just simply a connection. But that course sounds really amazing, especially with the massage you do and the different, all the different things that you bring to the table as far as an understanding of the big picture, the holistic picture of it all, that you're just not looking at something from one lens. You have multiple lenses um, that you do. And I, I think that that brings a lot for this program. So make sure that if you love what Julie's saying, you go to the show notes and reach out to her because I mean, I know how to find her on my own, so I don't have to, I don't have to go to the show notes, but you can go to the show notes. So Julie, I have one more question for you okay. before we're done. Cause I keep, I keep asking questions and actually I have two. The first question is, is there anything you wanted to talk about today that I didn't bring up or mention? <laughs> Gosh, I think we covered a lot of ground. Um, you know, I, I just really want to reiterate, love yourself. Give yourself some grace. You know, every little win is a win. And don't beat yourself up, you know, over the setbacks. Love the food that you put in. Feel good about it. And just, just love on yourself more. People, it, it, you should talk to yourself the way that you would talk to your best friend. And if you wouldn't say something to your best friend because you know it would hurt her feelings, don't say it to yourself because yourself is listening too. Oh, beautiful. Those are great words of wisdom. And so now the final question is, if we were going to put a billboard up all over the whole world that everyone would see your message, what would that message say? Oh. Listen to your gut. Listen to your heart. They're listen, never wrong. Listen to your gut. Listen to your heart. They are never wrong. Signed, Julie. <laughs> that is a great, great billboard because it's true, right? Well, Julie, I want to thank you so much for hanging out with us on Someone Gets Me Today and fielding all my questions as they come through intuitively and having this great conversation with me because I learned a lot. And I'm sure everybody who's listening to us has learned a lot as well. And so thank you so much. It's been my true pleasure. I always love spending time with you, Diane. <laughs> thank you. So remember, everybody, to keep your face to the sun so the shadows fall behind you because you're a rock star. You're here on purpose with a purpose. So go out there. Let your light shine and be the brilliant being that you are. And until the next episode of Someone Gets Me, be well. Thank you for listening. I trust you gained some valuable inspiration and information. Please join me and other visionaries in the Someone Gets Me Facebook group. Or for more information on my services and additional episodes, visit someonegetsme.com. Again, thanks for listening.